Probably the most common fracture in man is a volar plate avulsion fracture. We've all got eight fingers. Hyperextension injuries are for everybody at some time in their life, at some point. And the volar plate always, that's not something we can say in medicine often, tears loose from the base of the middle phalanx. And it tears loose with or without a small fragment of bone. We don't see the great majority of these injuries so that we don't have any idea how many little fractures of the volar plate occur. But one would have to assume that it's probably the most common fracture in man. They create a problem for the joint. If this is the attachment of the volar plate, which runs down the front, it's a thick structure that doesn't bend and it slides up and down on the front of the joint. And we notice that when we flex the joint down, the volar plate slides down the front of the proximal phalanx so that 100% of the rotation that occurs in the structures between this middle phalanx and the proximal phalanx occurs right there, right where the volar plate attaches. It attaches via Sharpie fibers into the base of the bone volarly and when the finger flexes, the volar plate slides and doesn't bend. The proximal phalanx does its rotation. That means all of the rotation takes place right there. That requires a highly specialized attachment, which is fine and narrow. And when this gets ruptured, with or without the little piece of bone, it can tear off a little piece of bone or just tear loose. And then it heals back on. And when it does, not unusually, you'll have a situation where, let's put it in flexion, where the volar plate is healed back on in a sort of broad attachment of tissue and scar. And this does not have the flexibility of the highly localized volar plate attachment to the volar aspect of the bone. And this big uh, glommy area won't let the volar plate rotate at this point. So it tries to bend and that produces the symptoms as the volar plate has to be forced into flexion, which it won't do. It wants to sit straight and go up and down. And what we do with these is you treat the initial injury with a splint for two to three weeks. And at two to three weeks, you take it off and let them use it. And then we'll leave it alone and watch it for about six months. And most of these don't require anything further. As, as we said before, they, they often are not even picked up or seen by a physician. They're just a hyperextended injury, the coach pulls the finger, snap, get back in the game, and nobody ever sees it. But if at six months this is still a painful finger, which will have what we call a positive volar plate test, passive flexion of the middle joint will be painful, significantly painful. They also often will not flex. And if they don't go beyond 90 degrees and they are painful, we will do the following procedure. We go in and roll back the volar plate off its attachment to the base of the middle phalanx. So that's the middle phalanx, that's the proximal phalanx behind, and we'll just detach the volar plate across, then create a small cancellous groove across the base of the proximal of the middle phalanx. Notice that we leave the assembly line attachment intact on this side. And what that lets you do is mobilize this finger totally in 48 hours. We don't have to wait for a pullout wire or a bony attachment of any structural sort. The assembly line is intact on the, on the opposite side from which we open it. We usually try and choose the side where there's an injury to the, to the collateral ligament as the side with which to peel the volar plate back. Make a small cancellous groove. We'll take this and put it back up here and put one little stitch into the assembly line putting the volar plate back in position. But that is not a stitch that's responsible for maintaining the volar plate from ripping loose. That is accomplished by you having left the attachment on the assembly line on the opposite side. And we take and dress these and 48 hours later allow full mobilization. And that full mobilization on this structure in line with this cancellous groove across the base of the middle phalanx will reestablish an adequate sophisticated structure which will allow rotation to occur at the proper place at that highly specialized attachment and let the volar plate remain collinear with the proximal phalanx and reestablish a painless finger in a very simple fashion.